Happy to I serve. Know. I know you are. <laughs> Happy to serve. Good morning, Good morning, I think. What is it? Is it Tuesday? Yes. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Took me a minute. I'm not, we're not settled it yet. It feels a little later in the week to me. Oh, how I'm is everybody close. today? We're both in black. Look at us. I know it. And we don't even plan it. We didn't. Although, plan why it. isn't your hair all like a wave like mine? <laughs> well, today is very humid. Very, uh, very humid, and your hair is adorable as it always oh, is. Oh, did you did you did you happen to put alerts off? No, but I usually don't. It's you don't I don't get too many at this time. I'm not that well loved to get texts. So <laughs> not, not true. No, we should I know that case in point. Oh, good morning. Sorry, we're, you know, sometimes we turn this on and we're like, ooh, there right. we are. And uh, we just take a little bit to get situated. And <clears throat> is it equal? Okay, sorry, excuse me. Excuse me. Hi, good morning. I'm giving you an extra hug whenever I do this. Good morning, what you, what Dawn. Is Jan, it not Jan, Jeannie. I don't know, sometimes I mispronounce names and it's such a goofball way of doing it. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Good morning Carly Ann. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, <sighs> Shannon. Oh, Shannon just sent me the I told you. awesome God size story this morning. God size story. God size story from Shannon. It was Shannon. I just told her, just put my makeup on and then you text oh. me this story. Literally had to re-put my, my mask. Oh. So, Good but it morning, was Colleen and Marlene and Kim. So good to see everyone on this Tuesday morning. Oh, it sure is. And Jess and Lori. Okay. So I, you know, when I was telling you, okay, I'll just say it. Okay. Um, so I'm a little more chill because God has asked me and Joy and I are together, um, not doing like a full fast, but we're doing like a vegetable fast. And the uh -oh. only reason I'm Sharing saying, it. yeah, because I I'm definitely it. a little more chill. Me too. There's a little bit more headache. And a little bit of a headache. There's a little bit of headache. Um, but we really, I just wanted to have you um, hear our hearts and, and just how, um, that's why we do a live. I mean, you get what you get. And so we're feeling a little more low and a little headachy. Not that you would have known that because the Holy Spirit's going to come rushing through and you're probably not even going to know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> um, but we're transparent and, and we're, we don't mind vulnerability. Um, sometimes we have vulnerability hangover. But we'll do it anyway. That's what we're called to do as his servants, and we're glad to serve. But anyway, so Thursday, Joy told you that one of you um, let WMUZ uh, know about what we're doing every morning through, well, when quarantine started. And um, so they are interviewing us on Thursday, and then on BAP, excuse me, then on Friday, Friday. God had, um, through this community, um, prompting our dear friend Michelle, just praying over this, and then we talked about it, just um, offering up baptisms on Friday, right after this live. So here at Barn 45, there are going to be baptisms mm. at the 9 o'clock hour, and many of you have started to sign up on barn45.org, and that's lovely because if you have felt that you're ready to give, um, make a public proclamation of how Jesus mm -hmm. is who you are following and you have given your life to him mm -hmm. um, we would we would love um, my, our husbands and us would love to be part of that process with you and so we just love that we're seeing people sign up and I'm saying all of that because Joy and I have um, in our maturity in our growing maturity have really realized the power of the Holy Spirit when we get out of the way and when we empty ourselves and we continue to, another way of saying it is like dying of self, dying of our perspective. And, and um, we take what we're asked to do incredibly seriously day upon day. But this week is a very important week. And we just wanted to, um, or I, just, I specifically prayed as I was reading the book of Daniel because of this one. I read the book of Daniel on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it was talking about how much discernment and power and strength he got by eating really well, and by eating what I'm considering like alive foods. Because what Joy and I do, um, mostly with baptisms, we take that very, very seriously, that nudging from the Holy Spirit to do such a task. So we're emptying of ourselves in a whole other way that I, I don't, you know, I've done a fast and I didn't let you guys know about it and all that kind of joy and I did. But this one, he just said, you know, like literally two minutes ago to say it out loud, how we're preparing ourselves to do such a task. So we're honored. We are. 
We are honored. So uh, it's going to be great yes. Friday. So just to remind you all, Friday is the baptism. We're going to have the eight o'clock if you want to come early for the um, on-site yeah. and online Bible study. And then right. directly after we've got um, baptismal and it's going to be underneath the pavilion. Bring your friends, bring your family, um, bring your chairs, your Bibles, bring it all because um, it's going to be a very powerful hour. I just, I start to cry even thinking about I know, it. But, um, nice. And I love that Tara brought to my attention that we are preparing ourselves as um, vessels that day of, of being ones to baptize that we are, like she said, we're just, we're taking this very serious, we're not taking this lightly. And on top of that, that's so interesting that you shared that hmm. because last night that was so strong on my heart, not just for the baptisms, but for the study. Yes. Um, I think you all know that, but we take this, hmm. you know, as fun as this is and as, as delightful as it is, and it truly has been one of the Such greatest highlights of my life. Mm -hmm. um, we do take this very serious. Mm -hmm. We do, we do recognize um, mm -hmm. the significance and the importance and the generational changes that are happening as a result of us doing That's this right. every morning. So, um, everything we say, everything we do, we, we do take serious, and we we just ask every day that, that the Lord would take over, ambush our tongues, yes. ambush our hearts, yes. and anything that's not of him would just fall on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always been my prayer from the very beginning of even opening up the barn, because we're going to say things that just maybe aren't right, or just hit you wrong, or whatever it might be, and um, and the Holy Spirit's so good. He just always gets it so right. So good. So, yes. Um, today we are in 2 Timothy 2, 20. Five. Five. Um, inching our way yes. and um, little by little this gosh Tara this week know. you know yesterday was yesterday was well no it started for me Friday night because I read 224 and I was so heavily convicted like I didn't even want to receive it the way that God was trying to show it to me it took me a couple of days I was so triggered in certain ways that I was recognizing I was not operating and living the way that he wanted me to mm. in this area of showing kindness to those that are not of our kind and um and now we're going to be talking about you know diving even more more into gentleness and mm -hmm. so this again if, if this is your first time i'm so grateful you're here stick around grab a pen grab a journal get really close because this because the god who adores yeah. you and loves you uh really wants to speak to your heart today That's to restore right. you and to uh to provide a peace for you right now in this world that wants to scream otherwise. That's right. I'm so glad. And you know, one of the things that I don't know, I don't think we're going to do this, but I had a little nudging. Yeah. Um, Joy and I, I would, we don't plan beforehand. We come here, we get situated, we pray, we talk a little bit. Um, usually it's just us talking and not planning for this. Yeah. And then when we turn this off, sometimes we're just still going. And we're, I don't know, we just, the spirit is still moving. Yeah. And I'm like, we should, you often say, we should be recording this. We should be recording. Not because of what we're saying, but because of the overflow yeah. of spending an hour in his word. Right. So I wonder what we'll ever do with that. But I heard your heart even more yesterday. And we went from like in awe to laughing and like half laughing and crying over what did Jesus do? We know like we know like we know. When you pray, it's a real prayer. Listen to her prayer. It, it, as you all know, you've been listening. But if you're new, Joy's prayers as we um, begin this um, hour are just so good because they're from him. Yeah. But it's always get us out of the way. Get us out of the way. So listen, that was him. He wanted, he wanted something to happen. He wanted us to experience something. He wanted us to know the word is a living word and a written word. Mm -hmm. And so this hour is a very divine hour that we pray, we beg him, please make sure that you take over our mouth. You take over, you know, you always do a takeover in our heart. So anyway, I just, um, I just remember reading or, or listening, not reading, just listening to Joy's heart after and we're processing and it's just like, oh my gosh, y'all, if you could have been part of that um, overflow, it would have been so wonderful. But he doesn't call us to do that. So here we are the next hour ready to dive in and I'm telling you yet again, he, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is up to something. He, he, he got me again. My heart is yet again different because of this hour that I had, well, two hours prior to this hour here. Yeah. So I can't wait. Yeah. You ready to pray? 
I'm ready to pray. <laughs> something else on your mind. I have so much Do on my mind this morning. Do you want to say something else? <laughs> oh. I'm asking the Lord every time I open my mouth right now what I should say. But um, oh, We always do. We always do. Rest assured. Ah, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, friend. Let's all pray. And um, <clears throat> let's just pause. Just take a deep breath in. And um, let's just pause before our good God. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for every person that you have placed here this morning. Thank you for all these precious names that I'm seeing come across the screen. Thank you for these beautiful faces that I see. Thank you, Father, that you have hand-chosen them. Would you just let us know right now that you have hand-chosen us, that you have seen us, that you haven't forgotten about us, even in the midst of maybe somebody's um, just disaster in life right now, mm. flat out in that. Would you lean in really close and then get into the area of their, of their heart, get into the marrow of their bone right now and just tell them you have not forgotten them that you are fighting for them, that you are doing a new work in them that they can't even understand on this side of heaven. Father, thank you that you fight for us. Thank you that you, are, you rescue us. Thank you that you're our, our daddy. Thank you that you dance over us. Thank you that you delight in us. Father, thank you for that. And um, Father, thank you for your bigness. Thank you that you show up in our own personal life in a way, way that might be different than the person next to us, in a way that you know would would remind us that you're near, that you're with us, that you're close, that, you're, that your hand is resting upon us. And so, Father, I just ask for a supernatural hour. I ask, as Tara just mentioned, that when, you, when everyone hears our voice, including myself speak, that I wouldn't even see myself, I wouldn't see Tara, that everyone wouldn't hear us, we would just hear you, we'd just see your face, we'd just experience your love. And Father, I just pray for that washing over today. Father, I pray that there would be ears of our heart that, that maybe that have been blocked our whole life, that today, out of all the days, today, they would be unplugged, that we'd be able to see things that maybe we haven't been able to see, and you've given us these glasses today to wear, to be able to see clear vision, maybe for the first time in 65 years, yes. because of today, <clears throat> because when we're in your presence, the chains are broken. When we're in your presence, Anything that's clogged is released. When we're in your presence, healing happens. When we're in your mm. presence, joy is experienced. When we're in your presence, kindness and gentleness oozes out of every pore. Mm -hmm. When we're in your presence, the media that the enemy is behind no longer has any reign, any pull, that's any right. say, yeah. any authority. When we're in your presence, all we see is you. Father, that's all you're asking of, of your followers, yes. to see you. Father, just remove the distractions of the world, not the distractions of your wounded people, not the distractions of those that are desperate to know you, but the distractions of the evil one. Those are the only distractions we don't want. That's right. But the distractions of the needy, the distractions of the lost, the distractions of the broken, Father, those aren't distractions. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that everywhere you went, you had a mission, but when there was a distraction of a needy, there was a distraction of the sinful. There is a distraction of the lost. You unhesitantly stopped. Mm. You paused and you healed and you loved and you showed kindness, which is what drew every single person to repentance. I wanna be like you, Jesus. Boy, I need your spirit. I'm desperate <clears throat> for you. Mm -hmm. I love you, I praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <sighs> That's what I'm saying. Me too. Thank you for that prayer. Yeah, well. Thanks. Yeah. I just meditated okay. even more in his presence. So this is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're going to dive in. And uh, real quick, Pilar, I will be responding to everybody. Um, if you're, um, for those of you who signed up for the baptisms, if it went through, you got an automated um, email. So if you got an email returned back to you, then it worked. Okay. So let me know if um, you did not get that. But and if it um, doesn't, if it doesn't, should they just go ahead and, and Facebook us through Barn Forty Five? Let yeah. Us know. If you just leave a general we'll message, absolutely. If you just leave a general message on Barn Forty Five dot org, uh, we will get you signed up. No problem. We just want to make sure. Um, yeah, that's all right. We would just make sure that. <laughs> We'll just make sure that, um, uh, 
distractions. We will just make sure that we, what we want to do with the signups is make sure that you feel seen and welcomed and that we um, know what to expect. And we have a powerful prayer team, Joy and myself, just praying over. So um, you just have to let us know and we will be ready for you. And if any of you are here during the eight o'clock hour and want to stay for the nine o'clock hour and you change your mind in the middle of the experience and to also want to be baptized, that's amazing. That's being spirit led. So it's yes. okay. It's all right. So I the sign up is that. just a little logistic. Um, so good morning. I just want to keep saying that as I rest my heart in Jesus um, if you don't mind, I'd love to no, dive in. No, you said that when we first got here that you just want to dive right in. I'm, I'm like, ready. Let's do it. Yeah. We're going to dive in. We're going to park our hearts. We're going to camp out. We're going to see what he has to share. That's right. Um, I cannot even tell you. I'm emotional today because God showed up in my morning time yes. this morning. Um, mm. I woke up at 4.30. I've set my alarm for that time because I wanted extra time with him today. Mm. And I've just been weepy, not because I'm sad or burdened, I'm just like, I know the goodness and the presence and the love and the kindness of my Jesus is overwhelming to me today. And it's all because of what, what the scripture said yesterday That's right. and how God showed up yesterday and what he did yesterday mm -hmm. and, um, how he strengthened me yesterday. And, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't know any other word today other than I'm overwhelmed by, mm -hmm. by him. So, um, well, that's the, that's the vulnerability of we don't know who we're going to be in God and we're spending time with the Lord before we get on here always. And then this is us sharing what he wants us to share from the overflow of our time with him. So y'all, you don't know what you're going to get. We, we could be a little, I'm, I'm more meek and chill today because of just the, um, the fasting and just in my Bible time with him, I really wanted to be upbeat. Like I am so stoked at what he is up to Did in you this say stoked? stoked. I don't know, is that a word? That's an not, 80s word. I'm not, I'm not allowed to word, use that word anymore. Oh, I can. Because I, that, yes, my kids won't let me use other words that they use. They're like, Mom, you can't talk like that. I don't even understand the language my kids use. I, I don't, don't even, even know if stoked was in me. That's what God <laughs> wanted you to hear, okay? He wanted that little blast from like the past from like those of us who were raised in that time period, who grew up in that time period. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just so stinking excited about what he is up to, what he's up to in my life, what he's up to in my kids' life, in my home, and in my community, and the strengthening. It's like all of us, this, all this family here, what he is up to in every single life Seriously. that we get to do every morning with. Truly, you mm -hmm. that is a truth because you guys, the way that you interact with each other and with us. And the grace that you give us when we can't respond right away, um, you know, just because there's just so much love and we're so appreciative. So come on, we are over. Yeah, that's the one that goes away. I know, <laughs> I know that. Um, so we are just, I'm on fire for him. I got my eyes locked mm. on him. But there's a real, there's a real life. There is real life that goes on. Um, and yeah. so, you know, we're just experiencing whatever it is that he wants us to experience. And we're not hiding from any of it. So, well, I think you probably know that by now. Uh huh. If you followed us more than a week, you've seen laughter, tears, uh, saying, you know, <laughs> me saying things wrong or mispronouncing words or whatever. And everything so, in between. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's called life. <laughs> exactly. Right? That's yes. what's so beautiful about this it's community. Unscripted, it's... unscripted, unedited life. And we are craving that type of truth being anchored in the word and then being brave to explain what he has done that morning. Yeah. Okay, so when I was reading, um, we are in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. And um, Joy and I, uh, I speak for both of us, but just speaking for myself this morning, um, my heart as I'm starting to read this verse, uh, I was like paying attention to the world. And I'm like, I don't want this to be applicable. I don't, do you understand? Like when we do this, it is not to produce for you. We are students of the word. That's all this is. We are students of the world. And um, we are trying not to be, sometimes he wants us to be teachers. Sometimes we have hit a, a mountaintop that's like, oh my gosh, this has been amazing in my life and I want to share that. And it kind of comes off as maybe the teacher or the expert in that one itty bitty little area. But the 99% of this time mm -hmm. is being a steward 
is really learning a steward of the word of, of what he wants for us and um, just pure humility. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just a transparent, personal Bible time. We are not, I'm not personally coming across with a posture of a teacher. I just have to say that again, um, even though my background Girl, you is teach teacher. me every day. So um, verse 25 specifically says, and I'll read it and come back to it, the word that I'm parking my heart on, <laughs> is um, again, just verse 25. They should gently teach those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change people's hearts and they will believe the truth. Okay? I so badly wanted to keep going into 26, but we're, gonna stop we're at stopping at 25. They should gently teach those who oppose the truth. That's interesting. So, Your says they. What does your say? Mine does not say they because mine is Paul talking to Timothy and he says to Timothy, listen, oh, yes. Timothy, gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Does it say gently instruct? It just says gently, gently instruct. instruct. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Yep. So I didn't really stop at they. Mm -hmm. And Joy did a great job last time and maybe even the time before connecting it. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So I, as you guys know, I tend to read and reread and reread and reread to hear his voice. And I know I hear his voice in a personal way for me. I just know it. It's like, ah, there we are. Where the world's mm -hmm. comments and distractions, and I don't want to jump to commentary. I don't want to jump to other people's perspective. I just want to sit and go, what yeah. do you want me to know about this yeah. verse? What do you want me to know about this verse? So when we talk about stuff, it's coming from that experience. It's coming from that place. So... I still, it took me like 10 minutes it felt. Then I had, hang in there with me because this is, this is our Bible time. Then I had to turn on either soaking music or worship music. Because mm -hmm. that often helps me just get laser focused, my eye on the ball. And he is it. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, I'm there. So I had to repeat, reread a bunch and listen to a little background music that just helped me just get into focus. And I knew when I was there, it's just a personal nudge, like, okay, we're in alignment. So then the word came alive. I also want to say this. Yesterday I saw somebody had said, and I, we actually see it a lot. What translation are you reading? What translation are you reading from? And in the middle of all that was going on yesterday, I wrote down, because I saw someone say something about translation. And here's the translation we're reading from. The divine Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? My translation is her same. It's NLT. But her wordage, so her verbiage is a little different than mine. Yours is a little different. Sometimes I want to go to King James Version. Sometimes I want to go to in a linear -nair. Just kidding, because when we messed that up before, I messed it up before. And I really want to know more. Listen, the translation is the divine, the Holy Spirit, the living God in you that wants to translate verse 25. Do you understand? That's what we're doing. We're allowing the relationship between me, mm -hmm. my God who created me, Jesus Christ who saved me, and the Holy Spirit who sustains me. Girl, do you understand? Like that, guys... So when I read this word, I dare not continue reading unless I know that I'm getting it translated by the Holy Spirit. And he will then guide my path. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then when I'm reading, I go back up to the word they, and I remember Joy's sweet voice that went um, uh, to, voice, blah, blah, to verse 24, the Lord's servants. Mm -hmm. So I reminded myself, who is they? It's the Lord's servant. So I kept reading, and then he goes, no, 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 Tara, go back up. The Lord's servants. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty much, maybe I won't even say anything else after I go on this little bit of a rant here. Because I didn't go deep into the other aspects. I did, but not like I did with the Lord's servant. And then I said, okay, what do you want me to know about the Lord's servant? Well, I'm a Lord's servant. Yep, okay. I get that. I learned that from 24. I, I believe that. He goes, no, 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 no. Lean in. Really listen. Girl, mm -hmm. sister, daughter, I mean, daughter, um, you wanted to know how this personally affects you, Tara, not what you're going to say at the eight o'clock hour. So listen in. 
And so I studied and I Googled the Lord's servants and I studied. And who was the very first servant I studied was Jesus Christ. And it says he wow. is the perfect servant. He was God who came as the son of man. He stripped himself from all royalty and he was the servant of God. And so I said, oh, and that is what this is all about. I serve one God, and I am a servant of one God, and I love that that one God was a servant himself. And I studied him for an hour and a half this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long expect exactly, but I just wrote all these notes of my eyes, everybody. I'm, it's not on my amazing spouse. It is not on my three amazing children who really are growing up, going to be amazing kids, mm -hmm. amazing adult men. My eyes are not on them. My eyes are not on my job and how I serve the world. My eyes every single day is on my Lord Jesus Christ. He is who I follow. I don't want you following Joy and I. Joy and I are doing this. The number of followers we have, that means nothing. You mean everything. Mm -hmm. But the number of followers will never follow that. Never. That will be our demise. That will take us down. Mm -hmm. My Lord is who I serve. It reminded me when we were in quarantine reading Psalm 123. Mm -hmm. And I read, and we read together, but it really hit me. And it says, we keep looking just bear with me when I read the scripture. We keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy. We're just waiting. We're looking at for his mercy. Just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a servant girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal, that is me every day, just going like this to God, leaning in, 45 degree heart posture, humbling myself, what do you, God, want me to know? What do you want me to know today? I empty of myself every day. I don't do a great job of it, but I'm telling you in the last five years when I resigned because of, of being obedient to him, had no idea why, and I'm gonna slow down at this point. The last five years when my one master, one, that I am his servant, he is the one I serve, and I quit my job because he told me to, and I had no idea why, but I have my eye on him. I'm listening for his heartbeat in me, right? So I have his Holy Spirit in me so that I don't have to work all that hard to hear him. He's right here. And I've had more discernment and joy and peace in my financial situations improved greatly. I gave up nearly a six-figure job and we are more financially at peace today. Mm. My marriage is better today. My parenting is better and more solid today, right? Because my eye is on him, not the world, and I'm not busy following so many other influences. I have one influence. And this is just where he and I went down this path. I'm I'm just, this is just for me. This is where I knew I'm in this leg of the journey where I am not intimidated any longer by the way of this world. I am not intimidated by how many followers, how many comments, what people say. That used to destroy me. I folded like a cheap suit. If one person didn't agree with me, I folded and my eyes went off of the truth and went on to the person's comment or went on to a hurt, or went on to a, um, a horrible real thing that was going on in my life. Today, everyone, I am in one word, and that's the word they. Mm. I am a they. I am a Jesus Christ follower. I have chosen to give him my life. I have chosen to do that for my marriage, for my children, and for who I serve. But he is who I serve first. My eyes are on the perfect servant. I studied Jesus Christ and how he walked on this earth. I want to do things his way. And that's scary. And that's opposite of how I really kind of have a natural bent to go in a different direction. 
but I keep going to the, I don't mind being uncomfortable anymore. I don't mind making people mad anymore. And I'm going to end on this. He was pierced for his transgressions. He was crushed for the inequities. He loved the unlovable. He, he saved sinners. He healed the unhealable. Hmm. That is what I'm here for. I don't know what that looks like, but every day when I sit before the Lord, he will tell me what it looks like. He'll tell me who I'm to love the unlovable. He will be the one to tell me who I serve that day. He will tell me what to say and what not to say. No longer will I ever again take my eye off of the Lord Jesus Christ who is in me who says, go love that person. Go be kind to that person. Say this, oh, I know, girl, that's going to make you uncomfortable, but go and help that person. Get out of your car and go help that person. Get on your knees. I can go on and on. And pray in a very odd place for all to see or not to see. So I'm just saying, that's all I have to say. I may not say another thing. The word they was me, and it was a reconnection with my Jesus Christ. That's the only one I will have my eyes on and I will no longer be intimidated by the ways of this world. Oof. That's all I think I have to say I think today. we need the victory man right now. I'm just feeling like... I don't think that's all you I have just to say wish today. that... I think, oof. I think there's a lot more that he's going to say today. I'm not sure. Today, but I, think I, I think I took up a ton of time. No, you took up... No, you didn't. <laughs> it's not about taking up time. It's about uh, being... We're all being fed. I'm in, I'm in listening mode. Yes, I'm receiving from you. Yeah. I'm receiving from him of what he's sharing yes, through you. Yes, yes. Is what's happening. And mm -hmm. I love that you can take one word and the Holy Spirit uses the word they. Ooh, hour and a half. And then or penetrates an it right into your heart. And then you give mm -hmm. us the overflow. That's the supernatural priority that mm -hmm. enables us to have supernatural mm -hmm. authority. That's why you have the authority to speak into our lives right now because you had supernatural priority. I love that. Right? And that's the thing is if, if she didn't have, if she didn't wake up early this morning, if she decided to press snooze, we all would have missed out on this. You would have, totally. yes, you would have missed out on it, but I, all 400 some beautiful people would have also mm -hmm. missed out on that. And that's why it's, it's not a, a simple thing to just go, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need to start my day with Jesus. It is everything. It could change and alter somebody's life, mm -hmm. including yours, but also those that you do life with. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also do love how it transitions into gentleness. That's right. And how it says here that um, he gently instructs those who pose the truth. How we're supposed to supposed to gently instruct those who. Yeah. Are. So listen, he's saying those of those of of our people that we do life with, how they oppose the truth that we stand for, the mm. truth that we live for, the one that you just got done declaring. Yes. Those that oppose that. Yeah. Those that spit in your face with that. Yeah. Those that say, I'm sorry, Tara, but I just, I don't agree with one thing you just said in the last 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Those people, Paul, who is talking to Timothy, uh, is, is leaning in close on his very last hours, days, months, we don't know. He says, Timothy, those people, mm. gently instruct them. Mm. Those people who don't agree with you politically, those people who don't agree with you morally, those people who don't agree with your opinions, those people yeah. who say things that you would never want to post, be posted on Facebook, those people. Yeah. He says gently. I love that word gently. Mm -hmm. Why does he say gently? Because mm. that is Jesus. That's, that's, that's who we're following. Was it? Um, I wish I, did I write it down? Oh, okay. I want to just share this. Matthew mm. eleven twenty nine. This is why Jesus place? says he is gentle, right? He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and you carry heaven burden, heavy burdens, mm -hmm. every one of you right now. Jesus is saying, come to me, all of you who are feeling heavy right now, who are feeling weary. He says, will you just come to me with your burdens? And he said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you mm -hmm. and learn from me, for I am gentle. Oh, I right am out of his mouth. gentle, he mm -hmm. says, and I'm humble. In heart, and you will find rest for your soul. You're going to find rest for your soul in me, Jesus says, because I'm gentle. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm harsh, not because I'm distant, not because whatever the thing is that you think God is, He says, because I'm yes. gentle. Yeah, that's what And I'm we're humble in heart. The God of the universe, mm. the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the, the name above all names. He says that he's humble in heart. There is not an ounce of pride in him. There is not an mm. ounce of deception in him. There is not an ounce of, of, of deceit in him. There's yeah. not an ounce of manipulation in him. Mm. There's nothing of perversion in him. Nothing. He is pure, undefiled. Mm. He is humble at heart and he is gentle. And we all remember that 
Remember that back in the day we'd have the what would Jesus do bracelets? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus would do. Mm -hmm. He would say, be gentle and humble the heart. Yes. And you know, I think that's where my heart's been since Friday is is I'm 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 I am I'm sad a bit mm -hmm. because I'm seeing our I've seen our culture at a, at a Christian, um, a Christian church possibly, mm -hmm. church as a, just a whole, a body. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing us lean outside of this gentleness and this humble of heart. And I'm talking to myself first mm -hmm. before I talk to everybody else. Yeah, me too. But I'm I'm recognizing that. I'm recognizing with the heat of what's going on in the world, um, with the the um, just the political parties that's going on and the election and everything else, right? That's just what's happening in 2020 alone. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that the enemy is pulling us one string at a time away from this gentleness that Jesus is telling us we need to have in order to be able to give rest to other people. Um, I'm seeing a pull away of a humility of heart, yeah. Yeah. you know, because of because of what the the enemy schemes that he's up to. Yeah. Um, but this is the cool thing, and I just heard this from I heard this from I believe it was Rick Warren. Is he the one who, re who wrote Purpose Driven, Purpose Driven Life? Mm -hmm. He was giving the definition of meek. It really, Ooh. what meek is, is gentleness, yeah. right? And, I, and the, the word says that only two people, this is what he was saying, only two people were called meek in the entire Bible. And it was Jesus and it was Moses. Ooh. Isn't that interesting? And then in Matthew 5, 5, remember when Jesus is speaking to like 80,000 people at one time? And he gives these beatitudes. Basically, he get, he flips the script, mm. like one after another, yes. after another, after another. And then in oh, five five, right. he says, "God blesses those who are meek, because those people, the meek ones, not the ones, not the ones that have a really good education, not the ones who went to seminary, not the ones with the right degree, not the ones, not mm -hmm. those ones, mm -hmm. but the ordinary unschooled people." Those ones, he says, the meek ones, the humble at heart, the gentle spirit, the patience, the kindness oozing out of their poor. Mm. Those ones, he says, they will inherit the earth. And here, I'm like, so this morning, I just, I just was with the Lord this morning, and I'm like, what does that mean to inherit mm. the earth? Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, Joy, that just means that everywhere you go, you're, my favor is just going to pour on you. Mm. When you don't deserve to get that job, I'm going to choose you to get that job, right? When, when you least deserve it, I'm going to give it to you. That's my favor. On you when you choose to allow my meekness yes. to be your identity yes so that's where he had me um, this morning on, oh, on gentleness. And that's maybe that is why our spirits are a little more I was I think Could I use the word meek apparently I didn't know only two people in the you Bible <laughs> meek well and this is what Jesus and Moses this is what I, learned I do too. feel a little more Jesus was perfectly Gentle. meek, but Moses did have, you know, he, he had some adult temper tantrums. We know that. There's some things that Moses, he got angry a lot. Mm. But what Rick Warren was saying is with, the thing with Moses is that even though Moses was meek and he messed up, the thing about Moses is he had a teachable spirit. Ooh, that's, there and it is. God right is there. really mm -hmm. not after our perfection. He's after a teachable spirit. Yes. You know, and so... That's where I just paused my heart this morning and asked him to continuously give me this teachable spirit because I'm never going to reach perfection. You know, and, and it was hard for me to not go into verse 26 yes. because there's just so much uh -oh. that, um, oops, yep. there's just so much that um, it, where my heart this morning, it, it, it gently went into um, 26, but to, wow, we have a lot of time. <laughs> but Well, good, because I think we need to cover boundaries as well. Yes, that's what I was going to, yes. Yeah. That's so good. That's what I said Usually when my flesh has a temptation to go in a certain direction, um, aside from what he had been telling me to do, I'm like, okay, I really need to listen in. And I do, maybe it is even going back into 24 a little bit, uh, a little bit more. But I, let, let me just say what's on the top of my head. So today I, I did wear a bracelet saying, what is love saying? So oh, I went to a I conference. Like yeah, I went to a Christian conference specifically on the prophetic because, you know, there's those spiritual gifts and I'm like, Okay, the little piece of paper that I took online or those little assessments yep. says that I have this, but what does it mean? And so I love reading in the word and mm -hmm. I love like learning from people yep. who, um, who are gentle, who yep. love well, yep. and who are scripture-based scripture and are paying attention to these divine spirits, that, that, um, these mm -hmm. giftings that they have. So anyway, I was at this one conference and it just, again, it says, what is love saying? That is exactly the same exact phrasing as what would Jesus do. Mm -hmm. 
And so ever since I put this on, I, I, I haven't put it on a long time. I don't often have a lot of you know, jewelry on, but it reminds me, and I think I'm going to keep it on for a little bit longer as long as he tells me, because it reminds me of taking an incident, like a child could say something, uh, my husband and I can see, it, see something differently, there could be a comment, there could be just something just goes icky. And, and whenever I remember this, it's just like, okay, I have two ways to look at this situation, mm -hmm. right? And it's either through the lens of love or guilt, fear, and shame. Yep. And so it couples with what I was saying earlier, where he had me earlier. When I choose to have my lo eyes locked on Jesus, I am choosing love. And I then have learned, I'm, I'm still learning, I'm definitely still trying to get out of the tendency to be led by fear, mm -hmm. to be led by guilt. If you don't do this, you know this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you are be careful with this, or if you say that to your child, you know, mm -hmm. that's guilt or that's fear. If you, you know, so you guys get the idea. So I then will be able to take moment by moment when I'm really in the spirit yeah. and be, and let that discerning spirit say, are you Tara making that decision based off of, are you following that? Is that an influence of, are yeah. you reading the Bible? Are you talking to joy out of fear, guilt, or shame? It's good. So it's a choice. What would Jesus do is a choice to decide to even ask that question. Because so often in our flesh, this is what I was going on and on about Jamie Winship's podcast yesterday, because the flesh, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, because we, here's what you have to do. If you're choosing a decision based on, and you have to ask yourself this because it's typically a, sub, a subconscious knee-jerk reaction, fear, guilt, and shame. It's not a high-level thinking reaction. You are coming off of fear, guilt, and shame. You actually act like Jesus is a human being alive today, a relationship with him today, like a, a person. He is a person. He is a being. He, he's in us. But just for a moment, for, for our flesh's sake, he is just like next to me like joy. When I choose to respond out of fear, guilt, or shame, I have to say, I'm sorry, Jesus, can you leave the room? Mm -hmm. can, can you leave? Because I need to respond out of not love. Mm -hmm. And that is what we do. We say we know the truth. And, and for a moment, the heaviness that both Joy and I are feeling and our loved ones in our surrounding environment who feel the same, the church is it, not the church building always, the church body. We say we follow Jesus. Or are we just saying we're Christians and it's a label and it's over? The relationship ain't there. But I, that's why I choose to say, I follow Jesus. It's a verb. It's an action. I'm, I'm choosing him. So often we say we're Christ's followers, but we ask him to leave the room when we respond. We're like, you know what, turn, turn the other, I, I got to type something up real quick. I got I to gotta, I gotta use words that I've never seen you use in the Bible. I've, when I study you, Jesus, I have to cross out um, gentleness because I'm not choosing gentleness. And that's the risk that I'm taking with my life is that I am studying him every day. And the risk is that I'm going to be really uncomfortable because that means I, I want to do what Jesus does. I don't want the bracelet. Mm. I don't want the hashtag. I want to do it. Yeah. I want to move into it. Yep. I want people to see it come from me. So I don't spend as much time talking about it. I, I want to do it. And when he knows my heart is there, ooh, the, response ability, uh, the response ability, the ability to respond has increased. I've invited more. I've invited the territory to increase in me, his territory. So the more I become more and more aware when I respond to my kids and I'm like, Jesus, you got to leave the room. I got to talk to my 16 year old. Jesus, I just got a really tough comment on social media. I need you to leave the room because I got to respond back because I got a quarrel. I want to be right, Jesus. I didn't see you do that ever anywhere in the Bible. I did not see you walk away from that sinful woman. But you know what? I want to judge that sinful woman and I, I, I need you to leave the room, Jesus. The more and more we study his ways, I study, let me say it better. The more I study his ways, the more I can't get away with my ways. Wow. 
My responsibility, my, a my ability to respond increases. I think we need to say that again. The more that I study his ways, I can't get away with my ways. It, my heart won't let That's me. That's really powerful. It is like he is doing somersaults in me going, girl, what are you doing? And the key is the more I study his That's ways. Right. If we are going to be studying the ways of the world more than we're studying the ways of God, that's why we're finding ourselves talking out of both sides of our mouth. That's why we're able to cross out certain Ooh, things in I the text of the word and then supplement it with the ways of the world. Yes. And it gets all enmeshed. And then we wonder, why am I feeling heavy? Why am I feeling depressed? Why am I feeling anxious? And then we are saying, but I, I'm praying. I'm going to the Bible studies. I'm having all this. But could it be that the ways of the world are getting enmeshed with the ways of the word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're left with a very confused church body that is, that is hungry, that is thirsty, that is starving right now and confused mm. and, and not understanding how to hold on to gentleness and patience and goodness and kindness and all the fruits of the spirits because they're fruits. They're fruits. Fruits, mm -hmm. fruits develop by not us white knuckling. Fruits develop naturally by doing one thing. Mm. That tree, it's planted deep into the fertile soil, mm -hmm. into the living water. That's it. That's all he's asked of you. It's all he's asked of yeah. us. Yeah. Is to plant those roots deep so mm -hmm. those those fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, safe self-control, they come out mm -hmm. naturally. They do. Naturally. I am mm -hmm. a work in progress with that. But this is what we try to do. We try to go, how can I how can I get an apple here? And how can I get a pear here? Mm -hmm. And we we bypass. We bypass waking up early and letting our roots go deep down into his fertile soil, mm. allowing those fruits to naturally be produced in our life, right? Because yeah. of the busyness, because of, the, because of what's going on, the heartache of the world, what, what you know, just the despair, the hopelessness mm -hmm. of the world that we're in. And yet, um, when our eyes are fixed on Jesus, as, he, as, as Tara just mm. described so well, we are always inundated with hope. Always, always, mm -hmm. always. Um, but I, I wanted to, if I could. I'm good. I wanted to talk about boundaries before we yes. end. Because oh, yeah, I, think yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I think some of us get caught up in, okay, so gentleness and, and patience and kindness. I'm, you know, and this is where I was on Friday night. I was confused on that because, um, okay, yes, that doesn't mean I'm co-signing somebody's sin. But how yeah. do I stay kind and keep boundaries? How do I stay kind so and say, that's important. not welcome in my world? How do I stay kind and still say, I don't agree with you, that type of thing? That's right. Um, we had watched a movie on Saturday night called um, The Way Back. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I know we don't watch rated R movies, but this one, just the only thing that was wrong with it had a lot of F-bombs, and it was like the, it was just part of the movie, unfortunately. But there was one particular scene that I just, I was like, Lord, I'm listening. And it was the scene where this, there was a, there was a, a man, and it's named Ben, ben F, like the, uh, the actor, he uh, had lost his son at nine years old to cancer. And so he stuffed his pain. He never felt it. Oh, he, drank yeah. it he drank it away. And every time that a memory of his son would come up, he'd mm -hmm. find him at the bar every night to the point where he was just losing his life as a result of not dealing with um, mm -hmm. the, the true uh, pain of losing his son. And then someone gave him an opportunity to be a basketball coach. He did amazing. He left the bar. He focused all his energy on being this amazing basketball coach. And, um, and then uh, he was triggered. And he had to go to the mm. hospital for a reason. He remembered those, those, those memories again. And he drank himself uh, one night almost to death. Showed up the next morning for practice. You could smell the alcohol. And um, he lost his job. So this is the situation that I'm talking about is the priest of the school walks in. And he is oozing of kindness. He's oozing of gentleness. And he says to this man who is so broken and he's an alcoholic mm. and he, he's done a great job with his, with his team. And he says, I'm going to have to let you go. Mm. And this guy starts having a fit. The coach is like, I've done so much for you. And, and this is how you pay me back. And he's screaming. And every time his voice got higher, the priest's voice got lower. Mm. Right? Because he brought it down a lever. Because gentleness diffuses anger every single time. And so what I witnessed in this scene is that the coach or the priest never let go of boundaries. He still said, no, you need to hit rock bottom. You, these are my boundaries. But he never, Tara never left the kindness, the gentleness. He just stayed who he was because mm, gentleness is strength under control. That's what, that's what meekness, that's what gentleness is. It's like, um, I also heard this like example that. of like, if you have two horses, right? Um, I think Rick Warren said this too. If you have two horses, they're both so strong. They're both, you know, so fast, but mm. one is tamed and one is wild. 
Both of them are just as, as strong, but only one is useful to the master. Mm. And that's what gentleness is. It does not mean weakness. In fact, gentleness is strength. Gentleness is pure strength. You know what weakness is? Um, boastfulness, yes. arrogance, pride, you know, mm. all the ways of the world. That's actually weakness. That's really easy to be. What's really hard to be in this world that's, that's oozing of pride, that's oozing of, of self-gratification, that's oozing of anger, mm. that's oozing of all that stuff. So good. What's really easy and what's really difficult, what's really difficult is to be gentle in that. What's really easy is to fall prey to that's that. That's right. So strength, the strongest person that you will know, mm. and I'm telling you it's Jesus in them because we are weak on our own, is one that will be gentle when the pressure is telling them to be mm. else, something else. So that situation in that movie, it was just like... It's perfect connection. Right. Thank you for that. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, so anyway... we that, struggle with that. A lot of boundaries. people... boundaries? Yeah. It, there was some really great conversation yesterday about... And I don't want to take you off course what you were going to say. Yeah. But they, they, there was some really good there dialogue. There was. That's why I wanted mm -hmm. to bring it up. I saw, this, um, I saw this somewhere, but it says, Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter. Hush until you Ooh, heal. Oh, I love that. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter. Hush until you heal. Mm. You know, there's that verse in um, Hebrews 12, 15 that it talks about um, a, a bitter root. And let me tell you, I was knee deep in bondage to a bitter root when I read this. And I wept like a baby because I'd read it many times, but it was at one moment. God goes, Joy, you ready for this? I'm getting out my divine highlighter. I'm going to show this to you. And it says that uh, if I have a bitter root, if I, am, if I am holding on to any kind of bitterness, right? And it just shows up in our mouth. It shows mm. up, right? But I was holding on to this bitter, bitterness thinking no one else could see it. Mm. And he's like, when you've got a root of bitterness, it troubles you. It troubles me. But guess what? It defiles everybody yes. around you. It was defiling my children. Mm. It was defiling my husband. It was defiling my sweet parents. It was defiling life, people I do life with. It defiles everybody around us. And I know I speak of this verse a lot, but this one really, God mm. uses a major, deep game changer in my own life. Wow. And that's where the enemy wants to keep you. He wants to keep yes. you in that bitterness of the world. He wants to keep you in the bitterness of, of the government. He wants to keep you in the bitterness of that person saying that. He wants to keep mm. us in bitterness so that we don't um, live out in our gentleness, in our patience, in our kindness, because those are the very ingredients mm. that draw people to Jesus. Girls and men, we are here for one reason. That's right. We are here on this earth for such a short stint of time. Yes. It is not for our pleasure. It is. I mean, those are icing on the cake, and yes. I'm so grateful that's why actually why I started crying this morning with my Jesus, because mm. he showed me all the undeserved gifts he's given me. Mm. Someone posted a picture of me at 16 on Facebook, and then they said, you look like Shay with a wig on. Oh. And I lost it. Oh. What a gift I've been given to have a son, Shay. Yes. Like, I want to cry thinking of that. Yeah. And I was so lost and broken. at the, I saw my 16-year-old self, and I just, I was so broken. Mm. And here I am, 45, and um, I'm mm. whole. I'm not perfect, but I'm so loved. Yes. I'm no longer um, lonely, mm. and I'm no longer um, depressed, and I'm no longer full of fear, mm. and not because of anything I've done, but because of the one who I invited into me, what he has done, what yes, he alone right. has done in me. And, um, and he wants to do that for all of us. Mm. I really believe with everything in me, Tara, 100%. revival is happening here. That's right. What, you know, even with some of the, um, what, the weirdness of yesterday, uh, I, I know that was 100% Holy Spirit driven. There's a revival he's wanting to do in us. That's right. What you just shared, that is what's happening. What you mm -hmm. shared before I started speaking on boundaries. What you shared about blocking Following some of Jesus. Jesus out and keeping some of Jesus in and bringing the world in and, and meshing it with the, with the mm -hmm. word. He's like, can, can we stop that? Mm -hmm. Can you focus more on me, on my ways mm -hmm. than the ways of the world? And it, what will that mean for you? Will that mean that you have to turn off the news for a while? Will that mean that yeah. anything of another person that you don't know, yeah. I don't care if they're a celebrity, I don't care if they're your next door neighbor, I don't care, anything. Do you know that anytime we listen to slander or gossip about anybody, a, a celebrity is still uh, a person, just like you and me. If we listen to that and we don't know that person individually and personally, we have actually sinned greatly greatly it has happened in my own family my husband's name was slandered during this this whole time with y'all it was an awful time in our family life mm -hmm. and this man said awful awful things about my husband put it over a like a it was like a, a national international mm -hmm. um medical um community that mm -hmm. everybody in the medical field is, is is privy to and he slandered my husband's names he said the worst 
I mean, the worst of the worst of the worst about my husband. And everybody internationally knew about it. Mm -hmm. And it was all the gossip. And it was awful to have to be first in front row to watch my husband go through that. Because, number one, for the last 10 years, my husband has been walking so faithfully and so beautifully yeah. and so freely with his Jesus. Mm -hmm. And to hear things from his past be brought back up and then perverted and right. twisted right. that much more. The barn was brought into it. It was awful. Awful. And you know what it taught me, though? Mm -hmm. It taught me that when I see anybody in the news, I don't care if it's my president, I don't care if it's my mayor, my governor, I don't care if it's my best friend, Tara. If I hear anything of anything of anything of that person, I am not allowed. I've been commanded, actually. Mm. If I'm a Jesus follower, I have been commanded that I cannot believe a word of that because I don't know the author of who's saying that. The only author I know is, is my Jesus. And until he tells me about her, until he tells me about him, until he tells me about that person, that's the only time I can listen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if that person has come across my feed and I haven't been given the information from my true author, then, then I get on my hands and my knees and I pray over that person. Because I pray that when somebody would hear about my husband's name that yes. didn't know him, that they would not engage in it. They would not believe it. I mean, I prayed so hard morning after morning before I logged on here with y'all tears drove me down my face. I pleaded, don't let them believe this. Mm. Don't let them believe this. I'll let them listen to you, Jesus, the true author. So I just pray as a community that we can do that for those people in the world as well. And I'd love to add on, because yeah. um, Carly and some of you and Joy and I talk about Jesus was a table flipper. He Ooh. sure, t he, he had his moment. Um, and that's why I study him. But you know when table flipper, he still showed gentleness. You know what the only thing he said? He flipped tables. But you know why? Because he said, he said this, with gentleness and mm -hmm. kindness. Um, this is a house of prayer. Exactly. This is not a den of thieves. There is nothing wrong mm -hmm. with holy anger. But in your holy anger, girl... There is strength under control that That's oozes right. with gentleness and kindness, even flipping the tables, because Jesus flips my tables of my heart every single day. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say, is that number one, when I study him, and I did, I, Joy and I have talked about it, like, this is the time to be a table flipper, <laughs> but it was for the kingdom. It was for the kingdom. It wasn't for evil. It wasn't for the world. I'm not going to be a table flipper for this world. Whew, you're not getting my attention, enemy. Right. I am not going to be a table flipper for this world. I'm going to be a table flipper for the kingdom. And it is still, again, I'm not going to take that out of context. I'm going to lean into that like Joy just added on to. I'm going to study that. I'm going to study what's before, during the table flipping, and after. I'm going to study his whole... My, listen to this. I'm going to be a table flipper it's, on this it's, hair. It's good. It's good. All right. I'm a table flipper now. I'm serious. I, I'm on fire. Look at this hair. Um, so it, it, yes, he's a table flipper, but it was probably 1% of the 99% in how he walked this earth. So who's going to tell me to, when to table flip? He is. I'm going to get on my knees mm -hmm. and I am going to say, God, is this a time you want me to flip some tables? And if so, how? And is this the time you just want me to wash some feet? And when Joy read, ooh, washing feet, that's a whole other thing. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter. Hush until you are healed. And when, when she read that, I thought, I think I should hush my whole life. Yeah, because I, I am healing myself. day after day after day. Because the minute I point a finger out, there's three fingers pointing back at me. Yeah. And, I, and, and I feel convicted of, in a good way, in a good, healthy way, I want to say, even when my son was badly bullied and I wanted to go after those kids, God said, let me tell you about these children. And if you come after them with hate, it's going to breed more hate. Hush, child. Mm -hmm. That was hard for Mama Bear to do. Yep. But when I have my eyes locked on Jesus... He will tell me how to respond. And that pause is where we get to sense the boundaries. Mm -hmm. That pause is where we say, Pilar, right, friend? This isn't healthy for me. This environment is wrong. Yep. But you don't have to be angry and spiteful. You just walk away with the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. It was wrong. And now walking away is right. And... and you know what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. God will tell you we're all the boundary that we have to really protect is our heart just encased in truth and love and the blood of Christ. We skip that step. The intimacy step. The, we, yep. we skip the intimacy step. Mm -hmm. 
and let's all just just do a quick check and we're we're gonna wrap this up but let's do a quick check and i'm gonna go do my hair because this is just amazingly horrible <laughs> But this is what he called me on the camera, camera for like some only reason. Only on camera is this like coming unglued. I'm, okay, so it's just we do have to go. <laughs> how many of us are fighting a fight without Jesus Christ leading? Mm. And I just ask, That's how? Right. What is the percentage of time you're spending following the Lord or following that newsfeed? And I'm not convicting you. This is not coming from me. This is what I did this morning. This is why we do what we do. It's every day, five days a week, because we're showing you that we follow him first. And then he tells us what to do thereafter. Yeah. So I just leave, we just, you know, just do the best we can to do it ourselves first. So we're done with verse 25. Are we're we? going to pray. <laughs> okay. We're going to pray. <laughs> All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, my mind and hair is quite discombobulated. <laughs> so may you um, just, your words, your ways just flood out my mouth because uh, I show a, a very tangible example of not really knowing what to say and how to pray, but doing it anyway. Because I follow you. I follow that prayer is a powerful part of our day. And so I've just little by little trusted you with my words. And my words are powerful because you are in me, Holy Spirit. So may these words just um, be a comforting blanket to this world. That's all. May we find comfort and refuge under your guidance, under your wing, under your ways. May we... Um, be even more attracted and pulled to your word, your truth, and that will guide our actions, our responses. We have to receive it from our heart first, so we just offer. Every one of us right now, if you're listening, it's not by accident, will you just offer your heart in a whole new way, not to Barn 45, not to Joy and Tara, whoever these ladies are, to Jesus Christ. Christ. Let him be the leader of your life. Let him be your master. And may there be a day, if you haven't yet, choose to serve him with gladness and then watch him and his fruits just take over your life in a beautiful, bountiful, abundant, amazingly joyful way. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. I'm so glad I chose to follow you. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're all glad you chose to follow him. I'm glad I chose to follow him. I'm going to ask hey, him I got some good what news. to do with my hair. We got a new <gasps> stock. We have new of mugs. We have new mugs. They will be here Friday. They're, they're my favorite mug. It's like the round one. They're like, you know, they're just. You're making, you know what I have so to do So come Friday now? and make sure you grab one. For those of you who are not in the drivable area and oh, you too want a mug, here's what I will do for you because I, I know you're going to mail gonna, them. I, we will find a way, but we just, they, these are donations. Bobbles, we sell, we give those for free. Ba mugs, they're what? 14 bucks or something. 14 bucks. Okay. Um, so we will set up a way that you can buy a mug and we will send it to you. And I think we make a dollar twenty-five off each mug. It's and really absurd. every every dollar twenty-five goes directly, not to me or her or anybody, it goes directly back into the barn while it's buying journals, more Bibles, um, anything that serves whatever um, he tells us to do. That's where it goes. So could go to the it's a good extra dollar twenty-five. <laughs> yes. And that's probably we could probably do a little different with that. But until he says different. That's what they are. Yeah. Okay, so uh, love you all very, very much. Go into Barn 45, check out barn45.org and check out what is going on because that is probably the place that, other than mugs, because this was just sprung on me this morning, but um, where um, all of our updates are and things you can do and, and when events start opening up more and more, not events, but classes and coaching and things like and that. Events. We're and events. Have an events. There will be events, but he hasn't released us. That hasn't happened Not yet. Not yet. But it'll be soon. on there. So check out barn45.org. I got to go do my hair. And we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for trusting us with your time.